Alright, today I had some free time and I thought I would try to play around with some copper plating in the fire on some steel. So we're just making a little keychain here. I just set down the shoulders there so I'd have a good running start. I wouldn't have to do it later. Put a little point on it. Don't necessarily have to be pointy pointy. Take a walk outside sometime and look at the leaves on the ground. This is my uh, third audio edit because for whatever reason after I'm done, comes up three minutes short, and I don't understand how that's happening. Start at the beginning, I end at the ending credits, and it should be that long. But it's not. I wasn't sure what I wanted to make for a leaf, but I do like a peened texture on the leaf. It reminds me of flint. In fact, sometime I think I'm going to make some arrowheads. Now, if you don't know how to make a leaf, there are a lot of videos on it. This right here is the first the first time I threw some copper on it. Um, it's not all going to stick. It's not all going to stay, I don't think. Well, especially after brushing most of it off. And it doesn't look like it's been coppered. But once you start striking the surface, you'll see that uh, some of the scale that comes off reveals copper underneath. But this is not the final coppering. funny I had to use that chisel and I looked all over for my, my good spring steel chisel and right there it is under my left hand. I did not see it. Although this one made a kind of a nice groove. You know you always have your go-to thing. You see the, the coppery color underneath. It must really build up some oxides because when you take it out of the fire it looks cruddy. I'm also thinking about adjusting my camera boom so that 
I get the full horizontal of the anvil in the full horizontal of the picture. I don't know. I kind of like it there. I think there's less chance of splatter ruining the outside of the camera. We're doing a video too on uh, crappy over expensive UV filters and why they're not needed and how to never have to get another filter again. Maybe next week. But it's an easy fix. Just start drawing it out. I like to draw out over the edge of the anvil. Sometimes I'll just use the edge of the hammer. With that hammer and that anvil, it's usually too much to try both. Like there are times when my divots get a little deep just drawing it out. When I, I, I enjoy hammering, and I, I, I just I like stretching steel. I just like it. I like drawing things out. It's pretty relaxing to me. And you start to get into that groove, and you're not here on Earth, you're just somewhere else. I've been uh, I've been taking it back for uh, eating quite often because well, with this new coal and I can get it hot quick, so it, it doesn't really bother me to leave a little bit of heat in it when I'm drawing it out anyway. Other things, uh, replenishing or whatever, that's different. Frankly, I kind of like I like watching the fire too. Straighten it up every now and then helps. I'm trying to think of what Drawing it out over the edge reminds me of, there was something else I saw somewhere at some point in my life that just occurred to me that just like pulling it like that and, and using the edge to decrease your surface area, it just, it's like you're making a noodle or something. I, I don't know. I, I used to clean off the anvil every now and then, the scale. I don't worry about it right now. That scale's not gonna... Well, if I'm, if I'm drawing it out, I'm doing more... 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 Uh, I don't know. I don't want to call it damage. But I'm doing, I'm doing more work to that steel than, than what the scale could stick to. There's just not going to stick there. It's not going to, if it makes a, an impression, which it won't, but if it does, it'll be gone after the first hit. And I don't, I don't bother with that during this process. But when you get to your final, final finishing, yeah, you remove it. Though I do want to figure out what to do with all that scale. I got a lot of scale around there. I bought some magnets to play around with some hold down ideas I had. And they're, um, 
They're off to the right of that anvil, about three feet. They're attached to the forge, just to get them out of the way. And to keep them from collecting junk, and it hasn't worked. It looks like I just drug it through, you know, a pail of iron oxide. Probably use those to collect it up. Would like to play with scale and, and copper, melted copper. I don't know. Now, if you notice, I don't know if you can see it yet. The very end of that, I had hit on the diagonal and it twisted it. But that's all right. This, this kind of th that kind of thing looks okay on something that's got an organic look or feel to it. I think you can make it however you wish. I, I don't really ever see imperfections in nature. Everything's for a reason. If you need a long, flat surface, stick it on the end of your anvil and aim it down the center line. Like I said, I didn't really have a plan for this. Right about here, I'm trying to think of what I want the stem to look like. I'm really kind of excited about playing with the copper, so it really doesn't doesn't take a whole lot of brain power to bend the stem. That was still probably hot enough to play with, but like I said, Get that fire. That's what it's there for. Although I have broken pieces by bending them too cool. I think at that point I decided it was, it was going to be a necklace, not a keychain. So I'm just kind of flattening things, trying to get the, the points and the edges away from the body. So the way it lays. You don't want any pointy bits poking a hole in your customer's lungs. They tend to frown on that. As it turns out, that loop is in exactly the right place. I got lucky. It balances. It hangs. It hangs with that leaf at, at an angle. I can only tell you this now because it's ten days after doing that. Like I said, I had to redo this volume thing, this this narration thing, three times, four times. I don't even know now. I gave it a little brass brushing just to kind of get a slightly different color on the rest of it. The more you brass brush it, the more it comes off. That was okay. I think we're poking free here. No danger. No, no need to call the EMS squad. There's my little bits of copper scrap from another project. Get them nice and flat. I think some of them even have blue paint on the back. That didn't seem to matter. 
I'm certainly not going to spend the time to remove the paint. Now that wasn't real time. I, I cut out the time it takes it took to heat it up. I like to. Um, I'm not. I don't really do uh, caves when I'm melting that stuff on there. I'll build a, a big mound and I'll put the air on, get it nice and hot in there, stick the piece in there let it come up to temperature on its own and then when it when the steel's hot enough then I'll hit it with a, a blast of air and that copper just collapses and, and flows if, you, if, if your steel's not hot enough it's just gonna roll up into a ball and fall off so that's not very useful and then no I'm not I'm not terribly worried about that copper being a problem with welding. It takes more than that to stop any welding. I wouldn't I wouldn't put that to the test on a, a paying project, <laughs> but so far I've not had to clean out a fire to do any quick quick welding on anything after doing that a different project same day type thing what I should have done before putting those veins in there was just gently uh, tap the face of that it, t it tends to, to you know pop the crud off and reveal the copper you just it's just less filing if depending on the shape in, in that particular shape I just went over it and filed filed it down until I got a, you know a, a, a clean level layer of copper but you could probably sand it somehow I do have a gizmo I use to sand but it tends to eat up the paper too quick I believe I'm heating it up again. Yeah. That little torch just didn't have enough horsepower. Uh, if it was just copper, thin sheet, it would have been fine. But with all that steel underneath it, that the heat was just getting sucked away too quick. And we could see what I were doing if I would have uh, zoomed back a little bit. I'm just heating it with the big torch, or bigger torch. I still haven't brought my settling tank over. I don't know if I will. A little swiping action there. The colors on copper change so fast. You gotta get it just right. There we go. It does help to quench it, but sometimes they change so fast that you, you don't even have time to quench it. So the best thing to do is to swipe it. Oh god, there's the monkey trying to show the product. Why is it so difficult to line yourself up right? It's very pretty. 
This won't be the last one of those. There you go. Zoom it in and clip out some. <laughs> Tell I don't do this for a living. No camera work here. I uh, hope, hope nobody gets seasick. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.